Hello, welcome to a quick presentation explaining question 15 from the January 2010 at Excel Physics on the Go paper. Okay, pause this video and read the question and attempt it yourself. Okay, so having read the question carefully, you should have picked out the key bits of information. So basically what's going on this thing, you've got a mass in here. When you release this thing, it's held back by this bit of string, so if you cut the string, this mass falls down, this arm swings up, and hopefully your projectile is flung at a good angle and uh, uh, you know has its desired effect. Right, so it's telling us here, on one occasion, the mass of the coins placed in the basket is 0.4 kilograms. The basket falls through a distance of 7 centimeters. Calculate the maximum amount of energy available for launch of the projectile. Okay, so the energy here is stored as gravitational potential energy, okay, in the mass of this, okay. So we just use the gravitational potential energy equation, mass times gravity times height. That will tell us the amount of energy stored. Substituting the numbers in, the mass is 0 0.4, 0 0.41 kilograms, gravity 9.81, and uh, the height, can't use 7 centimeters, it has to be in SI units, so it's going to be 0 0.07 um, meters. All right, multiplying these out, just use the calculator quickly, <coughs> 4, 1, multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 0 0.07 gives us 0.281547. Right, so this is going to be in joules, and I'm just going to keep it as that. That's my answer. Okay, moving on to the next part of the question. Pause the question and read this carefully. Okay, so what's going on here now is they've they've Cut to the chase, the examiners have. They've not um, asked you to calculate the uh, final velocity of the projectile. Um, they've told you the velocity of the, of the projectile on leaving and the angle at which it leaves at. And what they want you to find is the horizontal and vertical components of this thing's velocity. Right, so we've been told this. We've been told the size and direction of this arrow. It is 16 uh, meters per second and it is at an angle of 40 to the horizontal. Okay, now what we want to do is break it up into its horizontal component and its vertical component. Let's use green. Okay, okay. these two vectors should add up to the um, the projectile's velocity. Okay, if you uh, think about it, this one will change. The acceleration, uh, the rate of change, will be just be gravity, and this one will remain constant. Okay, but that's not actually being asked for in this question. So what we need to do is just calculate the sizes of these two arrows. Okay, so let's do the horizontal one first, as that's what it asks for first. Um, I'll just label this triangle hypotenuse opposite to the angle, adjacent to the angle. Okay, I want to find a. So do it the old-fashioned and slow way, so car, so, uh, okay, I want to find uh, A, and I've got H, so I've got A and H, it's cos, cos 40 will be equal to A over H, okay, and I want to find A, so I multiply by H, both sides, so I'm just going to be 16 cos 40 will give me, and I'll just uh, quickly calculate that, 16 cos 40 gives me 12.25 meters per second. Okay, so the answer for this part, the blue arrow, 12.25 meters per second. Okay, now let's have a look for this vertical component. Okay, I've got O and I've got H, so I can use OH, it's sine. Sine 40 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and I want to find O, so multiply both sides by H. H is 16, so it's 16 sine 40 will be equal to, just quickly work that out, 10.28 meters per second. Okay. Okay, uh, pause the video and read this question. Okay, so this is telling us 
that the predicted range is 27 meters, but it only goes 8 meters. Why is what it wants to know. Why, why would this be? If you read the question carefully, it already tells us. Basically, it says, don't talk about air resistance, because we know it's too obvious, and don't talk about friction in the machine, because, again, it's too obvious. So what you've got to do is come up with some other reasons, and it says without calculation, to explain why the projectile does not go as far as predicted. Okay, well, if we just look at the machine again, as this mass falls, it's going to accelerate. You want all the energy here to be done as uh, work on this object. The problem is, is that this entire mechanism here has got to be accelerated as well. So one of the reasons you could give is that the energy was used to accelerate the lever, arm, and sling, so less work was done accelerating the projectile. Less was available, less energy was available for accelerating the projectile. Okay. Now, as this sling was thrown and force was applied to this object inside here, um, because of Newton's third law, the object was also applying a force to this entire, well, to the, to the, the back of the sling, which would have actually moved this whole thing backwards a bit. Okay? It would have done a little bit of work on it in moving this object and imparting some velocity to this entire machine. So you could also say that due to Newton's third law, an equal and opposite force would have acted on the siege engine, accelerating it backwards. So again, less work was done accelerating the projectile, or less energy was available to accelerate the projectile. In the mark scheme, they also talk about, you could have had a mark for saying there was a headwind, which is a nice, simple thing to say, but I thought I'd go through slightly more complicated, uh, more in-depth answers. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching.